sun gazing. So it's more than just getting vitamin D. It's also getting harmonic light frequencies from the sun, that giant hydrogen furnace that supplies the life force for all living things in our entire biosphere. Can you believe that we were sold an idea that the sun gives you cancer? <laughs> and we put on cancerous causing ointments right. to protect us. Because we, we need to prove it to ourselves. <laughs> the source of all life on the planet, the thing that causes all living things to thrive, somehow singles out human beings to give them cancer? I'm a little skeptical. Look, what we know now is that the, where the skin cancer really happens is in the northern hemisphere or deep in the southern hemisphere where people don't get enough sun and around the equators where there's the least skin cancer and sunblock. You know, I'm not saying you've got to radiate yourself in the sun all day long, but, you know, you don't have to fear the sun. If you've been fearing the sun, I encourage you to, to allow yourself to let that go and to heal from that. Because that's a really infectious viral program that was put out and a lot of us bought into it. I did um, how do you actually protect yourself from sun? Berries, colored foods, antioxidants, vitamin E, coconut, cacao butter on your skin, intelligence with how much you want sun, aloe vera. I keep the best sunscreen, actually. I take David's uh, goji berries and I put them in a water, let them soak overnight in a big Vitamix and just blend it up and throw some raw honey, some cayenne, and sea salt. And it is delicious. Go out in the sun, drink it all day long, and you will not burn. Well, at least I don't. I have a little bit of uh, Italian skin in me, but uh, just... Uh, you just take uh, goji berries, throw them in uh, water in your Vitamix, just let it sit in the fridge. The oxidant really is? Like, what, what, real, what are they really? What are all these phytonutrient antioxidants? Is they're, they're little bits of color. Now, your skin is full of capillaries, and that means that your whole skin, that organ of your skin, is engorged with blood. Your whole bloodstream gets pumped through your skin. And when you expose your naked skin to the sun, light enters through your skin into your blood. How can we verify that for ourselves? Real simple. Look, what's the color beneath red? Slower than red. No, come on, slower than red. Infrared. You can't see it, but it's a color. Infrared's a color, you just can't see it. There's all this light you can't see, like radio waves is light, microwaves are light, gamma rays are light, x-rays are light, but you can't see them. Remember, red's the slowest color you can see, and as they speed up, it goes to orange, and then it goes to yellow, and then it goes to green, and then it goes to blue, and then to purple, and then to what? Ultraviolet. So on either end of the spectrum are these colors you can't see. Now look, there's cell phone calls all through this room. That's a form of light, and that light can pass through your body. X-rays pass through your body. Infrared can penetrate into your body. Infrared can penetrate into your body. That's why we have infrared saunas. Light has the ability to pass into your body. Some lights more than others. The sunlight passes into your body and hits those little reflective pigments of color that you can eat and reflects them back out and turns on, activates the color molecules in your body. That might, for some people, might be like, what's he talking about? Other people get to totally get that. It's like having little, you know, the melanin in people's skin, like people of African descent have melanin that absorbs sunlight, absorbs colors, and protects them from sun. That's what antioxidants do. It's real simple. But, you know, we need... We need that light on our skin to make vitamin D. We need light to go into our eyes and through EPA. We're going to talk about EPA tomorrow, which is, uh, which is essential fat. Light in your eyes, photons are converted into nerve impulses. It's like a photosynthesis. You can convert it into electrical energy. Where does the light go that goes in your eyes? Where does it, where does it go? It travels down the optic nerve to what? Yeah. Unless it's really encrusted with what? Right. Yeah. But you know your pineal gland has photoreceptors? It is an eye. It has photoreceptors just like are in your eye. In other words, it's your third eye. Now, we've heard that forever, and everyone was, you know, that didn't make any sense to us in our modern scientific paradigm. But now it makes sense. The third eye receives light, and that stimulates your neurotransmitters to be produced. In the presence of neurotransmitters, you become more intelligent because neurotransmitters cause bonding in the brain. In other words, light traveling down the optic nerve to the pineal gland makes you more intelligent. However, if you're not getting enough sunlight, you're not feeding your pineal gland. If you're not eating your pineal gland, you're not producing enough neurotransmitters, your mood is affected, and your thinking is affected. Dan, what about those ultraviolet lamps you can get for people who get depressed, say, in a real winter climate, and they don't have a lot of sunlight? Right. Do you think yeah, here's something controversial, because I know half the group's going to go like, what? But I have a tanning bed where I live. <laughs> and I use it in the wintertime. And I think you're going to start to see a lot of the studies on that. Are gonna, people are going to reverse their comments on that. 
Because it's so important to get ultraviolet light. It's like a nutrient. Now, here's the thing. If you start pushing north, 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 you get to where you can't make enough UV. You can't get enough UV, I'm sorry, to make vitamin D. You need a second strategy. What about the Eskimos? How do they get vitamin D? Fish oils. They got from fish. You get it from fish liver. So people in the far north always got on like fish oils because they, they those have vitamin D in them. So that's one strategy for the deep north. I, 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 are you have a tanning bed? <laughs> <laughs> so t- talk about that a little bit. Is there a certain type that you recommend and others that you, you want to stay away from? They're, they're getting better and better and better, and the first ones were really dangerous, and now they've improved. Here's better than that is I'll give you this. I'm going to give you a strategy. This is what I do. I don't tan off you, but when I do, here's what I do. I eat tocotrienols. Why tocotrienols? They're vitamin E. And what's vitamin E? It's an antioxidant specific to fats, like your omega fats. You don't want to oxidize. Remember those omega fats are in your blood and they're passing through the skin and they're on your skin. And if that UV gets on there in the presence of light, certain fats oxidize 1,000 times faster than they do in darkness. So if you can give them tocotrienols, vitamin E, you can slow that down. And then I eat berries. Blueberry, goji berry, wild berries berries that you find. Yeah, wild berries are wild berries that I get from companies like Ellen's for Life who have amazing berry products. See, berries are very close to the wild. Even if they're cultivated, they're very close to wild, right? So berries are super antioxidant because they got a lot of what? Color. I eat a lot of high color food. I'll take something like camel camel berry, lots of vitamin C. I load up on antioxidants. I do this before I get on a plane too because you get irradiated on a plane. And if you doubt that, have a look at the flight attendants when you fly home. Just gotta call it like it is. You're exposed to obviously a lot of radiation out there. Whenever I know I'm gonna be exposed to radiation, vitamin E in the form of tocotrienols, what I do personally, and lots of berries. So before I go on the tanning bed, that's what I do. And I don't do it often, but I do, but I'll tell you, it will pick your mood up if you live in the far north. And then you get out of the tanning bed, just like if you live in the north and you go away traveling for the winter and you get some sun and you come home and everybody's like, Wow, you look great. Oh my god, you look amazing. Until you get a tan, you don't even realize how pasty you were getting. When you come home with a tan, you look at your friends and it's like, whoa, you guys, man. Because you get clammy and you get pale. And you're not exuding that chi, that light force, the sunlight. So we need wild sunlight. What is sunlight? It's starlight. Think about that. It's a star. You go out at night and you can get reflected starlight and you can get starlight from very distant solar systems. In fact, each sun is different. Thousands of different ones, and that's why astronomers become more intelligent. And that's why the Mayans, who are extreme astronomers, were the, high, were the best mathematicians that ever lived. Because they exposed themselves to the frequencies of light from other natural suns in distant places. However, the lights we've been exposing ourselves to are disharmonic because they weren't designed with harmonic frequencies for our body. So, what's the worst one? You go to like the hospital or a school, those white tube fluorescent lamps? Blah. Uh, those new ones that I'm glad we got more environmentally friendly lights, but those like tube ones like they're in my room in this place. Wow, that white light, it gives you a headache right after a while. It's like, oh my God, I gotta get outside. That stuff, not really great for us, right? Or those incandescent lights, which I like better. They're warmer, like the tungsten filament lamps, like the light bulbs that we've been using for a long time. They're, and if you notice, you're starting to tint them blue because it's more harmonic. It's more harmonic, because what happens when you take a photograph, you know, you get used to it, you're in a room that's got uh, orange light in there, and you can't tell, until you take a photograph and everything's orange. We're exposing ourselves to orange light all the time, or these extreme white lights, none of them bearing a frequency signature similar to our sun, so they're very disharmonic. They lead to things like ADHD, I mean, look at kids, you know, like trying to put a kid for, you must sit in that chair for eight hours, eat sugar, and sit under these lights, and if you act out, we're calling your parents. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs>